Full-time reaction from Rugby Park to Kilmarnock 1, Celtic 0. I've got Kenny and Darren with me to go over a difficult afternoon. Kenny, I think you could tell from the word go today that we struggled. Um, it didn't really happen for us at any point in the game. What did you make of that performance? I mean, look, we've got no divine right to win every trophy. We've got no divine right to not lose a game. It feels that way sometimes, given we've had so much success. But I would conclude, all things considered, that's an unacceptable performance. Mm. The keeper's barely had a shot to save. Right from the outset, the whole thing was static. I'm not quite sure what... We knew that was going to be a tough outing. We knew about the surface. We knew that they're a team in form. We know that they're aggressive. We know that they drop back into a shape that's difficult to break down. None of that's a surprise. We knew all that several days ago. So to come out and face all that and the net effect of what we did was barely test the goalkeeper's not good enough. And it's about worrying if, look, it's the start of a new era, all transitional, we don't accept all of that. But it's a bit frustrating that if that's the net output of what Brendan Rodgers felt, I don't know what the identity was, I don't know what the approach was mm. today. It was completely static. We're playing with two young guys at centre-back who have not barely met each other, which isn't their fault. When they're getting the ball and they're looking up to try and find options, nobody's coming short. I don't know what the idea with the fullbacks is. They're not coming inside anymore. They're certainly not overlapping. They're certainly not getting balls into the box. They're just static at fullback and contributing nothing. I'm struggling really to see what the direction is based on mm. where we've came from to where we are today. And that might be a bit of a knee-jerk frustration. It's difficult. But the second thing that frustrates me about today is we've got a lot of money in the bank at the moment. Yeah. We've got about 10 days to spend it. We're already out of a cup because we've not spent it. Ohm looks like a good prospect. And it's nice having good prospects at the club. But if you've got an international player in beside Cal McGregor today, someone who's trying to prove himself who's hungry, who maybe costs seven or eight million pounds, that could well be a different result. We could well be in the next round of the cup. I don't think we're managing the transfer window well in terms of what we're doing more resources. I really don't. And it's damaged us. That's come back to haunt us today. So that's, that's, uh, this is a damaging result for the club at this start of the season under Rodgers' tenure. It's difficult not to be reactionary when you're sat here in the wake of it. But that was pretty inept today, and I'm struggling to understand why. Darren, a few concerns about the performance last week at Patoji. We, we, we got the result. Um, maybe I was in the wrong because I thought people were harsh, but I think you can tell today we look a bit confused building the game. You could tell in the first half that when the centre halves have got it, as Kenny says, the, the role of the fullbacks have changed, but we don't look like we know how to build it in and through midfield. Um, there were so many times today in the first half, and all right, it's a new centre half pairing. Lager Bielk is making his debut. Navrotsky's only played two or three games. But it was just a triangle. It kept coming back to Joe Hart because the man in the ball didn't look like he knew what the next pass was. That's got to be a concern. It's always difficult when you've got a start, uh, the team play the way Ange did and then they completely need to revert back to Brendan because Ange's style was just so unique. And then Brendan also has a similar kind of attacking style, but there are obviously slight differences. And I think... You look at Callum McGregor, he's basically playing the same position, but he looks lost at there. It doesn't have that same kind of desire to get on the ball and turn and face the game the way he does. And coming here, like like you said, we noticed some problems at Aberdeen. You might not have noticed it being there, but on the telly, I kind of noticed them. But you think that's one of the most difficult places you're going to come. Coming here, obviously, Kamarnock being in really good form. We can say what we want about the pitch, but we came here last season, we had no problems playing the pitch. We scored nine goals, I think, in two games. So we can't blame the pitch too much. The main problem, I think, for me was you mentioned the defence. Kenny also mentioned the fullbacks. Midfield was a struggle as well. Like a Matt O'Reilly again, like just so too slow. too slow, so off the pace, and not winning individual battles. There was I don't know what to say, lack of desire, because you could see that they're trying, but mm. it's almost like when the when the chips are down, they really didn't want to get stuck in because last season they, they had it all their own way. And today, when things may be undergoing against us, the frustration kind of kicked in. You could hear amongst the fans that even at nothing each. Watching the first half, the alarm bells were kind of ringing. You thought, oh, this, is, this isn't looking good at all here. Come on, look. They kind of had their tails up because of the form that they've been in. So, I, I don't want to say that like, this is crisis mode. It's definitely not crisis mode. But I think it needs to be a wake-up call going out, going out a cup in August. Mm. That recruitment is a must, obviously. We've got players out injured. That's not Celtic's strongest squad. But they should still have that squad today should still be beating Kilmarnock. Mm. I, I said before the game, the injuries piling up. It's a worry. Um, I do worry the number of players we've got out. Um, only a few weeks into the season. Kenny, I think in the first half we didn't create an awful lot. Um, Kyogo has a chance at the back post, he's sort of stretching for home uh, ball at the back post. Kyogo makes a chance after winning in the halfway line, but again, there was no real pattern to the attacking play. Um, we made changes and I think we got desperate in the second half, but as you say, 
didn't test the Kilmarnock goalkeeper enough and you, you think on that second half that we might build a bit of momentum, pen Kilmarnock in and we maybe had a wee bit of momentum around 75-80 minutes but again the, there was a lack of cutting edge to actually give us a clear opening. I mean it's just seemed completely disjointed. Matt O'Reilly, okay he's not getting any much pace but we know that, you can get a lot out of him despite the fact that he's not getting any pace but he's not playing close enough to McGregor know him. The full backs are not giving us anything out wide Maeda and J um, the fact that we don't have Jota hmm. is something that makes us clearly inferior yeah. to where we would have been coming here this time last year. It's obvious that we're an inferior side hmm. to where we were at the start of the window. So it's, it's very difficult to sort of conclude where we go from here to try and improve ourselves relative to where we were at the, the end of last season. The only time, actually, that we seemed to come alive was when Greg Taylor came inside. The one and only time he came inside and in the middle of the park mm. and, and Kilmarnock were confused by it. The whole thing opened up and we created something. He only did that once. He's clearly not under instruction to do that anymore. Mm. He's wandered in there because that's, you know, that's a habit. But it's a bit worrying if the only time you sort of carve out an opening is just a habit from your previous manager's mm. regime. Rodgers has got to get a hold of this pretty quickly. We've all, we're already out of a cup. Mm. We can't just be sat here in October saying, well, Brendan's trying to get a hold of things. I think he's been here long enough that I expected a bit more identity to what they were doing. Mm. And that's fine if it's not his side, but the board have got to back him to spend money. We've not spent the money. Mm. All that money sat there. We've not improved the first 11. We're weaker than we were, and those are all facts that no one can dispute. It's very hard to even sit here and give you a sort of decent analysis about why we were inept today, Paul, because we were just so static everywhere mm. that... There was a, just a systematic feeling. Mm. Aye, it certainly looked like that, Darren. I think Brendan Rodgers' comments during the week about uh, my job's to coach the players that I'm given. Um, I think the tone of that is a wee bit strange because, again, he was taking a year out and the club managed to convince him to come back. Now, I think if the club had said to him, listen, you're not going to have much say in transfers, we've got a good recruitment system that we're confident in now, we're just going to give you players within that profile, within that price bracket, and it's your job to just coach them and, and try and get the best out of them. Obviously, that, that is, has to be a huge part of what he does, but I think there was an assumption for everybody that we would try and bring in one or two real quality players, and I think the majority of the fan base is underwhelmed by the transfer business. This result today won't do anything to make that go away, will it? Well, we're not in the board meetings, so we can't say exactly what's going on, but realistically, when Brendan Rodgers took the job, surely he must have been promised some sort of number to spend and he, that must have convinced him to take the job because he must have been sceptical at first coming back because for the rumours that when he left previously that's kind of, mm. he was at one with the board of, mm. you know, asking for funds for players. I think as well after taking over you know, a treble winning team and a team that was so domestically successful last season and maybe he came in thinking that if he's got that same core squad that surely he must be able to replicate the same success that Ange mm. created but Maybe a chain reaction started that when Jota left and like we spoke about the injuries, the squad maybe isn't as good as, not maybe as good as I think, but maybe mm. taking for granted the teams domestically here. I don't know, but like we say, obviously, so I'm looking to that. I looked at the wingers today. I was really disappointed with the wingers. I think I said this to in the group chat after the Aberdeen game. I like Maeda, right? I do I like him. He brings a lot to the squad, but there's certain games where he just cannot affect. Like take this, for example, that pitch. He can't get in behind. He can't run. When the team's sitting deep, and he gets whipped off yeah. after 60 minutes. So I think for that, you need, I like, so I'm not saying you need another Jota because guys like Jota, you know, they're hard to find, but you need someone who's a bit more composed, maybe wants to take on a player, not not mm. just someone who's going to get the ball and run, but someone with a bit of flair in the team. Mm. And Leila Labada as well, like, he's kind of similar, very direct, just get that uh, winger with a bit of composure in, in the centre of the park as well. Hatati's obviously going to be out for a while. Kenny, you mentioned that Holmes, really just a young guy, and he's in beside Callum McGregor. Mm. An international midfielder, could we do with that? I think I would like to see, a, we spoke about this last season actually in January, getting a bully in the middle of the park. Mm. We lacked that today, especially with Kamarnock's midfield pressing us in my face. Mm. Just a bit of investment is needed and I'm surprised we've not done that. Maybe the fact that we're out this cup today, that might wake some, some mm. people up in the board and think that investment is necessary because the pressure's going to be on for the fans. Mm. Aye, it is. I think we just lacked ideas all afternoon. Kenny and Darren makes a point about the wide players there. You've mentioned Jota. I don't feel like we've really got a ball carrier now, a dribbler, somebody that can commit players. Haksabanovic comes on um, in the second half and I'm yet to see the two fouls or potential fouls on him when he's in on goal and has a great chance, one at a cutback and one at a shot. Um, but I just don't feel like we have that player because when a team like Kilmarnock, who are really good in their shape, 
or defending deep, you need to eliminate defenders. That's how the game opens up, but we just didn't have that at all today. I mean, we lack, what you need from a wide man, the real quality wingers, they're not just reliant on moments, they're not just reliant purely on speed. They have the quality in their feet, they have the composure in their mind to hold the ball up, to slow things down when things are frantic, but also to use their pace. Maeda doesn't have that, right? We know that, he's just a bullet head down when I mean, you get a lot out of that mm. Abada on the other side we know he's inconsistent we've watched him for two he's a great he's been a great signing Abada mm. still a young guy his statistics are great but you also know that if you play him ten times you're maybe going to get five games where you think he's good and mm. five where you think he's poor mm. and that's okay to carry someone like that if you've got a Jota who's going to start nine times out of ten but we don't we've got £25 million in the bank that's lovely but we're out of cup mm. because who We've got Yang, young guy coming on, again looks promised, but he's just a young project. That's the problem with the signings, isn't it? Like, there's no immediate players that improve the first team. It's all young guys who are coming to a big club for the first time, likes of home, likes of Yang, and they're trying to make an impact, but you can't be reliant on those guys when you've lost three key players like Moy, Starfelt, and uh, I mean, they, they talk about, the term pre-season needs to be, we need to have a sustainable model, right? We can't, Brendan Rodgers has been very tolerant of the fact that we've not signed anyone in the media. I suppose it can be no different, but he's saying the club is sustainable, they've built a sustainable body, they've got a great way of functioning, they've got great recruitment. That's fine, I understand all that. Every club in the world needs to be sustainable, mm -hmm. but they need to be progressive. Yeah. They need to try and leave a window stronger than you left the previous one. Mm -hmm. Now, if that means that you're just sustaining a level, that's not good enough. Mm -hmm. We've got to try and improve, particularly when our finances have so clearly become improved from where they were the last time we were spending money on projects, mm. I guess spending money on projects, but to qualify back to back for the Champions League, to bank £25 million for one player, keep signing projects, mate. It might, we might well win the league, we probably will, but we want to make a mark on Europe. Mm. We want to play well, far more style than we saw today. I don't think a sustainable model is a good excuse for not spending money. Mm. And none of us know what's going on in the boardroom, none of us know why that cash is getting stockpiled, but my God, they're leaving themselves in short order, trying to spend it in a wise way. And it's already damaged us in a, in a, in a material way. The treble's gone. We're used to winning trebles, five out of seven. Mm. That's one gone. And, and in no small part because we've been unorganised in the transfer market. Mm. Yeah, back to the game, Darren. Come on, deserved it. Credit to them. You, they've been playing well. You knew how they were going to set up today. Um, and the game went perfectly for them. You knew it now, now. If, uh, at half time, if they were going to get the first goal, it would be difficult for us. And that's how it played out. Um, just disappointed, as I say, with that final 10-15 minutes where you really want us to build momentum, create real chances. We just couldn't do that. And again, I'm going to come back to the injuries here because when it's not happening for Kyogo, whether you take him off or not, you want the ability to bring another striker on the pitch. We don't have that because the only other one we've got is injured. Well, I would like to have seen O come on that maybe a bit of physicality because you've seen as the game got on, Kyogo had to drop deeper in by the last, maybe once we got into stoppage time that last seven minutes, Kyogo was practically mm. playing on the edge of the box. He didn't even go in the box because mm -hmm. he had to get the ball. And I think, sorry, I interrupt you, I think that highlights how much we were struggling to build the game from yeah. middle to front mm -hmm. as well because Kyogo was having to come so deep and try and make things must have been so frustrated just to try and even get the ball. But then, you know, it's like you said, it got desperate t towards the end and Kamalik were basically pinned in their own half but we still weren't even creating anything mm. we basically tried to get the centre backs to the full backs and then get some sort of overlap mm. going but it just wasn't really happening Yang I thought he, he tried to get on the ball and like we spoke about him there like he is just going to it's just a hard environment for somebody like Kementi mm. young guy uh, Haksabanovic come on shambles mm. trying to you know win two penalties when he could have got a shot away mm. they weren't at the byline they could have got a cross away why do that just try and get the ball into the box man stop trying to con the referee into getting fouls mm. maybe we'll need to see it back on telly some people saying that the last one was a penalty, but mm. just try and stay on your feet, man. I'm trying to think who else came on there. Like normally we turn to James Forrest, like Haxban. Turnbull has, come on. Turnbull well, come yeah. on. Haxban hasn't even played, mm. and that's how desperate we got that we had to bring him on. Oz, how long's he out for? A few six more weeks uh, or something. Weeks, that. Yeah, so he, yeah. you know, we, we need to sign another striker, man. Mm. That's that's just pr priorities. Yeah, yeah. Kenny, we go to uh, back to Celtic Park next week, St Johnson, and then we've got the derby. Um, that will concern you. Head going to Ibrox. <laughs> Despite well, the fact that Rangers don't look in great, great shakes, but no, look, we're still me. three points ahead in the league. We don't have a defined right to win everything. It's difficult here because we are so used to winning mm. almost every single trophy we enter mm. that it it feels unusual to be stood here coming out the ground like this. So look, you need you, we do need to have a bit of perspective. Alistair Johnson is back in full training. It's only one player. I think it makes a huge difference having him galloping up that right hand side. Mm -hmm. 
But that's going to damage confidence. Rangers don't seem to have much confidence. They will be galvanised by the fact that we have shown big frailty there. That wasn't an outing whereby we were peppering the goal and hitting the bar and you just hold your hands up and say it was a freak result. Yeah. It wasn't a freak result. Mm. Keeper didn't have a safety make. So if Kilmarnock can do that, I'm pretty sure Rangers, despite how unconvincing they've been, will be fairly confident of shutting us out if they watch that 90 minutes back. Mm. So it is a bit worrying, but it is a t also a time for perspective. It's going to be in a normal surface. Kyogo will, perversely, I expect, get more service at Ibrox than he would in that type of outing there. Look, Rogers, but Rogers is under a little bit of pressure now, OK? Yeah. He could easily lose at Ibrox. Any team under any Celtic manager can lose against any Rangers team can lose at Ibrox. If yeah. he does that now, it's a bit of an uncomfortable start to the season. So he's got to knuckle down. As Darren says, hopefully, maybe a silver lining as they realise, hang on, we can't just cruise to every trophy without spending money mm. and now is a wake up call to do that because there's only a few days left to get it done yeah let's hope so difficult one to take today that is it for the full time reaction let us know what you think in the comments below and we'll see you next week for the build up to St Johnston thank you